Matt Schweiker from Chattanooga, and the ride that we're doing this upcoming weekend is the Three Rivers ITT. There's a website called Tennessee Gravel where they compile a lot of cool routes, anywhere from 20 to 130 miles. And each of the three areas has a challenge route. My name is Luke Swab, and um, I've just been riding with Matt Schweiker a lot because I like to ride. We both have really flexible schedules. He's constantly training every year for all these different big projects that he does, like Silk Road last year. Before that is the Colorado Trail. This year it's the Divide. He's got this project that he wants to do as training for the Divide. The Death March Revival, the Dirty 130 for the Hawassi River, and the Teleco Highlands 85 for the Teleco River. It's kind of become a cool thing to try to do all three of these routes in a calendar year. And we're gonna try to do it in three days, but not only in three days, we're gonna connect them all. So we're renting a cabin strategically in kind of this like middle ground area. And uh, it's gonna be the hardest ride I've ever done in my life and uh, we'll see if I can handle it. Last week it just came out that a big world tour rider, those guys have the biggest engines of all. They are at the pinnacle of the sport. Pete Stetna came into town and rode the route breaking the former FKT set by John Weigel by I believe about 40 minutes, but the overwhelming feedback from Pete on the area was how impressed he was with our riding and not only that, but how burly it was. Day zero, the most memorable part was showing up to the cabin and realizing that we were in the honeymoon suite. He was telling me about how to use the jacuzzi and I was like, if that jacuzzi gets used this weekend, it's gonna involve some major lifestyle changes on my part. <laughs> I'm using that. I got, no way. I got plans for tomorrow night. The worst hill, I think throughout the entirety of the trip, the only part that I ended up walking was the three quarters of a mile up to our cabin. I'm sure Cam will cut the footage of me barely getting the van up there. Then down to the cabin, down another driveway off the backside. Did you park all the way at the? It, no, I made it, but I'm telling you, it really? couldn't have been closer. Yeah. <laughs> it couldn't have been closer. And so, yeah, that that was not the ideal cabin to stay at for preserving energy after after your rides. Day one of the death march, um, pretty uneventful. They're out on horses and I asked you for a beer. Hey, y'all be careful, man. Think of like what's going on over here, by the way. Resources are scarce in uh, Polk County. People always wonder what I do, and uh, I used to be a commercial fisherman for 18 years as captain in a salmon boat in Alaska. I was sleeping. Tyler driving wakes me up. Luke, fire! I'm gonna go over. You can see flames coming out of that hole. And then on the off season, I started buying rental houses in 2011. And I work with my buddy Cameron for Roadrunner Magazine. I'm the photographer and I write articles and Cameron makes videos like the one he's making right now. But that's all boring stuff. I just like to ride bikes, hang out with friends. I had a couple stress drains throughout the night, but I ended with a fantastic field trip going to Mexico eating tacos and drinking beer. Oh! Oh no! That's all right. <laughs> Back in business. I'm going full Alaska, not even nervous. Luke's selling himself as the underdog, but I don't think it's guaranteed that either of us will get through this ride, but I also wouldn't have invited him if I didn't think that it was, you know, we were gonna be a good team and that he would be able to do it. So we're at uh, Thunder Rock Campground, and this is the day one death Death March Revival. Big climb right up Thunder Rock off the bat and start of the first day. I looked at my whoop score, 97%.
dude. Today's a great day to build strength. Challenge your body today with a vigorous activity. Ch check back in tomorrow, folks. <laughs> All right, let me get my computer. Amateur hour over here. Vamos! <laughs> What's our official start time? 7.39. All right. What you eating there, Luke? Oh, mozzarella cheese wrapped in salami. First ride update, death march. We're 15 miles in, hour and 50 minutes, just cruiser pace. Yeah, Having okay. fun, beautiful day, weather couldn't be nicer. I'm Kate Gates and I'm one of the owners of Mulberry Gap. We are kind of an adventure base camp. We've got cabins and campsites 12 miles from downtown LJ and yeah, it's a really, really cool spot. Cahutta Cat has a race named after in his honor, a 290 mile race through uh, Georgia and Tennessee that's named after this cat. Back in the day when people were checking in, he used to wait for people that had dogs to leave their sunroofs open and he would drop into the sunroofs and attack the dogs. Climb three for the day. This is climb three? We have five climbs. So this is kind of hill wise, you know, past halfway point. Well, this spot's pretty annoying because this is the top of Potato Patch. And two hours ago, we were in this exact same location. But the way this route is built, um, it's called the Death March Revival. And this is a new addition. It used to be 76 miles. That wasn't enough. So you used to just go straight through here. But this version, we had to bomb this whole hill, go to Mulberry Gap, get this sandwich, thanks, by the way, and um, come back up which is like adds 18 miles and 2,500 feet elevation or something. Well, bro, we're already at 10,000 feet. It's a lot for any day. Yeah. Not unless you're Pete Stancha. I'm gonna Pete start calling him Pete Stancha too. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's how you know Pete you don't Stancha? <laughs> hey Pete, this message is for you. We heard that you did the Dirty 130. Did you do the Death March the day before you did the Dirty 130? And then the Teleco afterwards, Pete Stancha? <laughs> <laughs> You know they don't even look that big. That's the bummer. Do yours look big? What? Your calves? No. No, they look yeah, I got little baby calves. Nice. No, dude. I have a little. I have a little chicken legs. Dude, this one looks good. Like look. Look at this definition right there, dude. The funniest part of day one for me was pulling up to this waterfall, and there's like five or six horses, and they're drinking PBR and all that kind of stuff. Listening to Hank Williams. <laughs> they got their little Bluetooth clipped yeah. onto the horse. I met these kind of folks. <laughs> they're out on horses, and I uh, asked them for a beer. We're mile 70. Hey, y'all be careful now. Hey. Oh, yeah, y'all too. I think Big Frog is definitely the crux of that route. That's just a really chunky uphill and downhill. It comes at a time when you're tired. I think Luke was maybe questioning some decisions on that uh, gravel bike for Big Frog. Big, we're, we're Big Frog was a... I didn't know we were doing Big Frog. So that was an unexpected surprise for me. I wasn't aware that the death march went up Big Frog Mountain. But it does. Like, I just did the Cahutta 100, which I know is not Death March, but similar. And then the Cahutta Cat, 
and both of those skip Big Frog, so it was kind of like a little a little bonus surprise that I wasn't too excited about. 75 miles in, 1100, 500 feet of elevation. What's hey. up, bud? You did it! Yeah, buddy, 13-4. Yeah, look, so we're almost at like exactly 12 hours. <laughs> 95 miles, 13-4 a climbing. What, what a day. Yeah. Is this a bag, a Ziploc bag of quesadillas? This is a bag of dia from like, Costco. Hey, do a wheelie! Yeah, Come on. Hi. Come on! Woo! There it was! Oh. We got back to the campground with enough time to ride the section of 64 before dark, which was a big goal of ours. All right. The connection number one. This is the end of day one. We're on 30, Highway 30. We did the death march, 96 miles, and now we're connecting it to our cabin, which is another 17. Looks like we're gonna pull in right before dark. Matt probably doesn't want me to film him pushing a bike. He's hiding behind my shoulder. Hey, everybody's got to push sometimes. But I'll tell you, this Airbnb we got has the steepest hill of anything we rode today in 120 miles. And it's our driveway. But we done did it. Day one, done. Day one. Right at dusk. Time for some pasta. Time to eat. Oh boy. This Airbnb has too much elevation. The route's fine. Route's fine. Route's fine. Hardest hill of the day is getting back to our cabin. Just yes. gotta do day one. What's up? Before Pete, we come after Pete Stetna. Pete Mustache, <laughs> we're coming for you. We might do the route twice as slow as you. We're doing three times as much riding as you. Dude, I'm counting on doing it. Three times as much riding I'm as you. I'm counting on doing it twice as slow. I felt great after day one. Um, I kind of went into this project with the plan. Day one, I'm taking it nice and easy. Day two is going to be miserable. And day three, I don't know what I'm going to feel like, but anyone can get through the last day. And it worked. I got done with day one. Um, I instantly started eating food, took my shower, and just went straight to bed. Took your bath. <laughs> I took a bath. It was a good day. Body feels just how I thought it would, which is fine. We just didn't take many breaks, and it was 14 hours. Got it done. Honestly, I'm nervous about tomorrow, so I'm starting two hours earlier than PJ and Matt. Otherwise, I just finished by myself unless they wanted to wait for me. You know what I mean? Which who wants to wait for you at 10 or 11 or midnight? And that's tomorrow's the day that I was thinking about all day today. And like today, I was never worried about today. And this whole week, I was never worried about today. It's tomorrow's the one that I'm nervous. Yeah, I I think day two, Luke Luke had a lot of ang not anxiety, but he it was, was anxiety. Yeah, it was anxiety. This whole project, I'm worried about day two. So day two comes, 
And I'm like, I'm gonna, well, I told Matt the day before, I'm gonna start uh, earlier than he does. It's 5.30 a.m. Day two, this is my hard day. I'm starting an hour and a half before Matt and PJ. I'm in my van sleeping. Let's get this ride started, baby. It's 5.50 a.m. Look at my flashing light. It's already gone out twice. I don't know what the problem is. Now we're green again. Now we're good. I have no clue what's going on with this light. Kind of strange way to start the day. But, uh, here we go. Let's keep moving. And time's flying by. It's already 6.15, but I'm at the start of the dirty 1.30. And here we go. PJ is joining us today. Some fresh blood and motivation into the group. My name is PJ Terry. I live outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm friends with Matt, and I was just looking to uh, get in some big training miles for upcoming bikepacking races. So uh, this is kind of the perfect opportunity. Might as well get uh, some time in the mountains. Well, I just know the way that he is. I know he's probably just out there making it sound like he's just any old bike rider, but PJ is the co-winner of 2000 and what year, PJ? 2022. 2022 TNGA, which is, TNGA is like our hardest regional route. And then this year, PJ set the FKT on Kahuta Cat on a single speed and won. So he's got quite the resume for a just recently turned 18 high school graduate. So yeah, big, big things coming from PJ. This is another thing that we're doing all trip is we're talking, you look, you look into the camera and you, <laughs> Pete Stetna. <laughs> well, a couple of things. That climb, first climb of the day was the worst thing I've done during this project so far. It was like, it's hard. And then um, the descent was the worst descent I've had on the project too. It was so bumpy and rocky. It was mountain bikey for sure. And it was way worse than that big fork section yesterday. I'm only 24 miles in out of 140. I was 100% right. This is going to be the hard day. Yeah. And um, on that stupid descent, I was looked down like, no more GoPro. That shows you how rocky it was. And we got way more miles to do today, so I'm a little nervous. Luke left at 5 a.m. this morning because he's a little worried about... 31.30 and the time it's going to take and so the plan is if he's staying ahead of us uh, he'll wait for us at Buck Bald which is at mile 80. Just had a cookie. I'm feeling a little better now. <laughs> Worst cabin ever for yeah, this ride. Worst cabin ever. <laughs> this is the other thing about PJ is he doesn't eat. I always look at you. what PJ PJ <laughs> brings and I'm like, how is this kid doing this? I've got like literally this entire thing. I've got like eight million calories. <laughs> this section that would kind of put me in a dark place <laughs> because it was a long climb and a, the bumpiest descent I've done out here. My hands are just like, it was like painful. I'm feeling better. I only got 110 miles to go. <laughs> About 10 minutes later, Matt and PJ show up and they're like, oh yeah, that climb was great. My body's feeling good. That was a nice, easy warm up. Yeah. Oh, here they are, right? 
Oh, 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 oh man. Dude, how you feeling? Pretty good? How long have you been here? 15 minutes? Another stellar day of weather. I mean, like, couldn't imagine the day being any nicer. So I'm feeling really good. I mean, mile for mile, today has been way easier than yesterday. Don't you think, Luke? <laughs> Don't, no. What do you think? <laughs> no. It's been harder for me today than yesterday. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, uh... Well, good thing I started an hour and a half early because I'm still not warmed up. <laughs> and my arms, it, it was just... It was, it was bad on a gravel bike. It was really bad on the gravel bike. BJ, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. He ate half of a half of a bar on the way here, so that'll hold him over for the next 15 hours. Meanwhile, I'm just like shoving food in my mouth while my jaw hurts. And I took off again, and then they caught up to me at the top of Star Mountain. See you back there. That hill sucks. And then we rode together the rest of the ride until Kimsey Mountain, where you know you just had to go into a different mindset and just finish it in the dark. Man, it kind of sucks always being the slowest guy. I'm gonna blame it on I was the best filmer. Would have been in the front if I didn't film as much. No way! I'll tell you. Remind me that if I ever do this again to not book a cabin here. Because the worst part about the whole day is pushing your bike up the last 200 yards of this three, I don't even know how my brain scrambled. I don't know how long it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm white. Where's Luke? Luke is, uh, he's somewhere. On the mountain? He's on the mountain. Well, it's 10.30. I'm at the start, or the finish. Now I'm gonna ride three miles to the cabin. We did 138 miles in 15 hours and 26 minutes, and we did 16,581 feet of climbing, and that's right at about nine miles an hour. So, yeah, big day. <laughs> just oh down. my gosh! I'll tell you how I felt at the end of day two. I was stoked. I got back to that cabin, and I'm, cause you know my anxiety, I'm like, I just gotta get through day two, and it was exactly how I thought it was gonna be, his long day, got back before midnight, so I was happy. In my mind, like, the hardest part of the ride was over, and I knew that I could not, like, coast through the next day, but it was gonna, it was gonna go down. It was gonna go down. So day three, we started with a 27 mile road transfer between the cabin and Tilico Plains, the start. We had to check out of the cabin in the morning because we wouldn't be coming back. But we got to start everything. Right? I already did. Oh, you already what, are we on? what are you talking about? Huh. Should I meet you at the gas station? The guy, the guy, 
I've just been cleaning all morning. Sorry, I don't have my computer started. <laughs> I was I knew I'd hear that at least one time. Yeah. But I was just been washing your egg pan I, that you Yeah, I was fully <laughs> expecting this and I was like, I'm totally fine getting an extra twenty five minutes. Yeah. Creek cabins to Telico Plains. And then from there we'll have 85 miles, 10,000 feet to the end, baby. Once we got into Telico Plains, we met up with Les and Nate who drove in from Chattanooga to join us on this ride, which turned out to be such an awesome thing, just to have some new enthusiasm, some fresh legs to kind of motivate us a little bit. And we spent $50 at Hardee's. Chicken biscuit, sausage, egg and cheese biscuit, bacon, egg and cheese biscuit, and a coffee and a cinnamon roll. That's just me. Oh man, I mean, I think it's awesome. I think they're kind of, you know, a couple screws loose, but you gotta be. How you feeling? I feel like I got a couple screws loose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Have fun. was fast and that's fine because at least for me it was fine because I knew that it was the last day and so you know I was saving matches on day one and day two but day three it's like I can get a little squirrely and just do it and uh, we went fast and it was fun I mean I enjoyed the climbs Twelve hundred more feet. We'll see who gets to the top first. It was like a regular Saturday ride with the boys. It didn't feel like the end of a miserable project. We were just having a great day. And it's a beautiful route. It goes along the Teleco River. You have two really solid resupplies. That's one that I, I always recommend that route. Teleco Plains. I don't get out there as often because it's a tad bit further to drive out there. But man, that route's awesome. I made it up here first. Oh, I did. Only by a bike length, but I was first. seven mile stretch that's all downhill and it's asphalt and you got your two buddies in front breaking the wind for you this big smile on your face and you're just enjoying it you're thinking about everything and you're just like pulling it off and uh felt pretty good <laughs> I thought it was awesome. The whole trip, our bikes worked well, our pacing strategy worked well, we stayed healthy, and I don't think we could have asked for better weather. So, I mean, all in all, it was just an awesome project. I'm so glad to have done it. When you're like planning these big trips, you have a loose plan, and if it works, great, and if it doesn't, that should be expected because things never work to plan. But I'm telling you, this, our plan, dude, we just sent it, and it just worked, and there's no problems. 
sometimes you question your your motives in the moment but looking back on it man as soon as we finished that thing i was just so happy this is something i'll remember forever and it was a great way to wrap up training i had to redeem myself because i did try the kata cat and that was the first ride that i've ever bailed on in my life so like i had a little bit of extra pressure on myself to complete this not only complete it but complete it strong Heading out to the Tour Divide, I just have a lot of confidence in the fact that I had these three big days. Man, 10 out of 10. Would encourage anybody to do it. But we did it first. <laughs> we did do it first. <laughs> I think Luke and I are always looking ahead. So, I mean, even on Tuesday, when we were done with this, I was pretty beat up and trying to recover, but I wasn't even spending too much time thinking about this. I was already kind of thinking like, all right, well, what, what's the next thing? And so, and we got the next thing, Nepal. Luke, he's been wearing the same pants for three days. I did the whole trip in one pair of shorts. <laughs> Uh, those hand up jorts probably have two to three thousand miles in them, I would say. And I got everyone to sign my shorts and write Dirty 130, Death March, Telco Highlands, and I'm gonna hang them up in my garage. It's my, my, uh, what's it called, souvenir for the trip. Mm -hmm.